beating each other up, having a boa fight club. <laughs> boa fight club. So you had ways to contain yourself online, and all the other boas who didn't want to be a part of the said fight club and anything that way. Uh, they didn't find the activities in order to see them, so they, well, in order to entertain them, so they went into crowd stages when the opportunity arose. Uh, but unlike you and um, yeah, it was Spider James. James. <laughs> so unlike unlike James, we were one of kind of stayed around. Um, you didn't. Your road was a little bit different uh, than James. You actually did see a lot of people uh, on the section of the ship that you were at. Uh, you did see a lot of uh, engineers and uh, personnel kind of coming to and from uh, because the actual employee uh, sleeping bay was near your quarters. So you got to constantly hear uh, people kind of talking about what was happening throughout the day and uh, different things that way. So you were actually kind of kept up to date on all the things that were happening around the ship. So you found out about the person named Lucan who had escaped from the pod and uh, the creature that had gotten loose and Luke ended up killing the creature. So you, you ended up getting informed and hearing uh, all that stuff that was happening. Uh, you also did get to see the transport of creatures uh, from the actual, uh, they kept, they decided they were going to keep uh, some of the experimental creatures that were not in the test tubes in the atrium with the criminals, but separated into the facilities uh, because they did not have enough room for all the specimens to fit into the laboratory. So every once in a while, you would see creatures uh, from being taken out from the atrium and uh, led over toward the laboratory. And uh, one of the big things that did stick into your mind that you actually did see uh, was one of the creatures that they were taking. Uh, it looked uh, to you to be of a humanoid descent. Uh, it held a humanoid frame. Uh, its flesh looked very morted, very decayed and beaten and bruised and, and just morted and dead. But you did notice that when you looked toward its face, the creature held an anomaly within itself. Um, it looked very uh, mutated. He held uh, about eight or nine actual different um, eyes that sat upon the front of his face. And it looked very, uh, it looked very intimidating. And you, as the creature is being guided, uh, being treat, treated almost as if it was a prisoner, uh, had cuffs along its feet, uh, plasma cuffs along his hands as well as his feet, and, and those in that shackle formation. And uh, he is being guarded by a, a good 12, 13 different guards. And uh, as he is being taken and uh, put into the laboratory, you guys kind of exchanged glances and you got to see all of all of what he was. And um, telepathically, he spoke to you. And um, the thing that he said to you was, am I the one to be enslaved? Why can I, why can I not? And uh, that was the one thing that was uh, left into your mind. When you heard that, when you heard this creature speak to you, uh, this being, did you, what did you decide to do? Did you stay where you were or did you try to intervene in the situation? I tried to intervene, opened up the, the door, was like, wait, what's it, what's with this creature? Okay, yeah, uh, so as you entered the laboratory, you kind of came uh, behind uh, the doors before they closed, and uh, you kind of called out to the guards, the people who were escorting this thing, and uh, you see out of the 12 that were surrounding this guy, uh, surrounding this, this guy, two of them turned around and they, uh, they looked towards you, and uh, they said, what'd you say? Kind of like in a simultaneous motion. I said, "Why are you taking this creature here? It's saint. It's uh, sentient. Sentient." Uh, yeah, uh, you say that, and both of them look towards you, and uh, one of them, he kind of the smirk kind of falls upon his face, and he says, "What does it mean? What does it matter to you? Civilian, mind your business." You see him turn around, and he begins to walk off as the other guy. Who the fuck is this? Thing? The other guy points toward the door and tells you. Alright, now this is getting me pissed off. You have oh, a right. big fucking boa standing in front of you, and you're telling them to leave? Yeah, now the guards are DeLorean. So they, what? <laughs> the guards are DeLorean. Uh, they have on uh, an iron Kevlar, they're wearing these uh, green jumpsuits. They have uh, rifles upon their backs. No. Yeah. Oh god, I just looked at the screenshot. No. Nick, Nick, Nick. All right, uh, well, I'm going to go through the door. <laughs> That's bad. Let me find you some few things. Sean knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say I hate this bitch. Uh, what did you say? Well, since they got rifles... Since they got rifles and stuff, and I'm, uh, I'm guessing still unarmed, yeah? Mm -hmm. 
And I got Kevlar on it, which will make my claws useless. I just leave. Okay. So, uh, at this point, you kind of like turn toward it, but then you look back. Uh, you kind of look back toward the being that spoke to you, and you see him, he turns his head, uh, not fully to face you, but just uh, to the side. You see the three eyes on the left side kind of uh, plant to meet your gaze, and uh, he speaks back to you telepathically as well as you try. What is left is on there. I nod to the creature, and I tried, and I think to myself, I wish you best of luck. Yeah, and then return uh, the beans be back and says, I wish them the best of luck. <laughs> oh, Lord, red flag. He said that in his mind. Okay. Yeah. The creature's telepathic, so it's like sending me messages, so it, I'm sure it could read my mind. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, now. Uh, I was just going to say, I guess I'm going back to my room. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I'm, I think I'm terrifying AJ. <laughs> what is that? Sugar to uh, It's It's an Eldritch Abomination. It's one of the numerous. Wow, that looks actually really cool. That looks awesome. Well, you know, I hate I, I, so many eyes to have. <laughs> I, I wrote a campaign that was basically semi Call of Cthulhu, so it focused around, you know. Eldritch abominations and yeah. incarnations of true terror. It was like it, the the players weren't worried about losing health. They were worried about going insane most of the time. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like, oh god, what is that? Uh, it's kind of, it's kind of funny. I actually had a DM one time that allowed me to play as an eldritch being. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I was... I'm sorry. What was that? I had a DM that allowed me to play as an Eldritch being, oh, a created race of It was on me. Excuse me while I play the ultimate <laughs> Annihilator, the incarnation of all death and destruction in the universe who cannot control his power, the creature known as, own, simply only as true chaos, Azathoth. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna step on here, sneeze, and the entire campaign's gone. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, uh, you step out, uh, as, as you're told, doors, the gotta like doors kind of close uh, simultaneously as you step out, and um, you hear a voice that is speaking to you from your right. Um, it's a very soft soft voice, you can tell it's of a woman's descent, and uh, she says you can't for him. What? The voice says you can't for him. I care for him? She speaks and she says, someone who doesn't care wouldn't have tried to intervene. Well, I just, at first I thought it was just another creature, but when I got the message, when it spoke to me, I f figured that there was a misunderstanding or something. His cry for help. Yes, it's cries for help. And uh, kind of the, the woman's voice is very, very deep, very stern, and it comes to a, a soft stop for a moment, as there's a brief moment of silence between the both of you. And uh, she says, that's his call. He calls you. And you answer. And what does this calling do? To recruit you. Recruit me for what? For the calling. Okay. She says, are you going to join the calling? to join his ranks. What is its ranks? What is it? Yeah, the woman speaks and uh, her voice is kind of lightens as it becomes cheery and uh, she says, he is a being beyond my and your understanding. A, male a malevolent being. So like a god of some type? She says, he is my god. And it could be yours. Mm, I'm not down to worshipping any creatures or anything like that. I just 
want to find my purpose in life. Uh, yeah, you know, the woman kind of goes from your right side and uh, goes to face you where you can actually see her uh, being, she takes her hood down and you're able to see her face and uh, uh, all of its uh, all of its anomaly. And uh, she looks you directly in the in her glass, raises her head to uh, see that you're, you're taller than her. And uh, she says, what if I told you this was your purpose? To serve him in the oncoming of the end. We are in many times. And he will take us all to the promised land. Wait, you're talking about the uh, end of the galaxy type end? The end of everything as we know. And... What species are you? She says, I am but of his creation. So he made you? In his image. That's all I, I ever asked for. I hate to say it, but that wasn't his image. I, I just looked at him a few minutes ago. She said, did you? I think so, yeah. She says, maybe you'd like to know a little bit more about him. All right. I want you to meet me in the Isu storage at 8 p.m. tonight. Okay. I can do that, yeah. There you'll be all of his followers. And you can decide for yourself if you want to join the call before it is too late. All right. So you see, she puts the hood, she slowly raises the hood back to her, uh, back over her face to kind of conceal, conceal herself. And, uh, she lowers her, her, her frame forward as she kind of hunches herself to fill the hood fully covers her face. And, uh, she begins to walk away, but as she, as she walks away, she stops and, uh, she speaks to you. She says, I'll be afraid for what would happen to you if you did not go into calling. I see a bright future for you. You shouldn't squander it. Okay, I will meet you tonight. Yeah. Uh, no more words are exchanged between the both of you, and uh, she departs away. She heads, uh, she heads straight forward down this uh, very long gated hallway, and uh, you kind of notice that as she's walking, you kind of see her being just uh, begin to dissipate. Like uh, you see her, and she, her frame becomes hollow, and slowly she becomes an essence of nothing. As, as if she just vanished from thin air. And you are left there to yourself for the moment before um, a Solarian, a male, who's wearing a black, uh, black like biofiber suit. You have the clipboard in your hand and he comes walking up. He has a little prep in his step and he says, hello there. But well, hello. He, he kind of looks you up and down and uh, speaks with me. Animals. <laughs> so it's not considered an animal. Mm, maybe. She said maybe. He takes a step back and he's like, "Well, I just wanted to inform you that a lot more of the civilians will need to be awoken from the cryostasis, and uh, I wanted to give you the opportunity to accept a voluntary job that the Malagi is uh, the Malagi is hosting for a certain amount of people. Uh, this people that are volunteering will be paid quite handsomely." What type of jobs are there? <laughs> okay. Uh, now, no, this, we're not forcing you to take anything that you don't want to take. And if you do end up taking a job that you find out you do not like, you can always switch it. Um, our first job is in the atrium uh, <clears throat> for those with muscle. She slams up. her fist uh, into her palm. Is like, I'll do that. She says, okay, that would be the atrium. You'll be dealing with the criminals on board and making sure that they stay contained within their cells as well as the transport of creatures from the atrium to the laboratory and from the laboratory to the propulsion. Do I get any cool items like Kevlar armor and rifles? You get free Kevlar. I'll do it. And uh, you kind of see him, he pulls out the clipboard, he says, and your name, please. Davana. And he writes up Davana and uh, he says, do you have a last name? Sick Paul. Yeah, he, he writes it in love, and he, he kind of 
he holds out his right hand to shake yours and says, uh, pleasure to meet somebody who actually was easy to talk to. I nod and let him go his way. I bet he had to sign up for that job. Yeah, so you okay. don't Clearly that was the dude that just had to deal with the spider. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, what, are you, what are you gonna do after? You can go back to your quarters or? Well, they said a meeting uh, tonight at eight at the whatever. The meeting at the, the there's the main meeting, isn't there? What time you is heard, the main meeting? Uh, the main meeting's in an hour. You heard that between the employees. So, can I go to both the main meeting and then the cult meeting? Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. Uh, you, you would begin to make your way to reporting. Yes. Okay. Luca. Yeah. In the meantime, you run into Mr. Solarian. Solarian? Yeah, Solarian. Is this the same time uh, like I just like killed something? Yep, yeah, you're leaving out of... You, you left out of the... Um, the crowd stays his room about an hour ago. So you've been roaming around. You haven't gotten too far. And, uh, you see this male. He's the only male that's in the hallway. He's coming towards you. and uh, He raises his right hand. He's holding the clipboard. He says, hello there. I point, like, as he raises his right hand, like, before he says anything, I put up, like, like my index finger to, like, point at him, like, to hold on. And, like, I just look him up and down. So, like, before he says, hold on, I'm just, like, put the finger up, just, like, look him up and down. And like I like I, I walk around him to make sure like this is this this whatever this is is not gonna kill me. Yeah. So and then like you, pat his back and like pat his arms, you know, pat his face. It's like <laughs> you're not gonna kill me, are you? Yeah. So you go to uh, trying to touch touch across his garments and he lets you at first and uh, he has a very like confused and puzzled look across his face and he says, why would I? What? Nothing. What were you saying? Yeah, he, he takes a moment to get back to the to his normal composure. Uh, he says, um, "There is a meeting in an hour, uh, letting people know that all of these civilians are are being released from cross states soon, and we wanted to give people who are already awake an opportunity for some volunteer jobs uh, if they so felt ready. Um, we have many jobs, and just because you take one doesn't mean you are stuck to it. You can always switch, and uh, people are being." Paid pretty well, if you ask me. Okay. Uh, he says our first job is in the atrium. The atrium has to deal with the criminals and uh, moving cargo to and from. Um, our second job is in the lab. Like, my eye twitches, like, as I think about military, just like. <laughs> I'll say, what? Our second job is in the laboratory dealing with specimens. I don't know if you're. Really... I, I twitch again. Yeah, he's like, are you okay, sir? Oh, uh, uh, what? Keep going. So the next thing he says, he's one word, he's just medical. I twitch. <laughs> he says, would you like to work in airlock? You jump yes, up for choice. Yes, go work in the airlock. Nah, I, see, I see it, man. I see the hat goes. Is I... <laughs> I asked him if there's any job openings in retail. Need help in retail. He says, We just need those are the only positions that we really need help in. I'll take the atrium. He looks towards says, Well, if you don't like the atrium, you can always switch. Okay? Uh, he says, May okay. I have your name? You gotta pull the board out. <laughs> Lucas, uh... He says, uh, After the meeting, all the groups will be assembled. You'll be sent to your job. Uh, hopefully, you enjoy yourself. If you do not, you can switch uh, once again. Uh, remember, this is volunteer work. So before he walks away fully, I want to put my arm on his shoulder and ask him, "Where are the hoverboards?" <laughs> Those will be in the shop. The shop opens up after the meeting. Do you guys have a recreational area? Yes, we do. Okay, good. You may leave. He recommends you you the Boa Fight Club. <laughs> yeah. So he just he just glances back at you and just keeps walking. And uh, <laughs> you are left to your own devices. Um, you do know about the meeting in the morning. It's an hour from there. So if you just have to start wandering around or find a map, 
or talk to another employee. To see I was say, are, are we going to roll like encounter chances of our characters encountering one another? Yep. Yes, we encounter each other uh, along the way to uh, the place as well as when you get there. You guys all get there. Yeah, I'll just start walking wherever I think that room is for the meeting. Okay. Go be a D2. That is. That one. I almost put a 1D22. Ooh. Yeah. All right. Are you ready? What's up, wild card? Yeah. Shut the hell up. <laughs> wild card ass nigga. No, he's the one that gets crushed by Artemis' pod. <laughs> uh, James, you roll a D2. Devona, you roll a D2. Uh, Luke, have we done I have, have to roll, don't I? Right, not yet. Have we done Luna? Yeah. We yeah. Done, uh, We've done everyone roll. but uh, the wild card. The wild card. Okay, everybody roll a D2 except wild card. <laughs> <laughs> is that his name now? The fuck does that mean? My name is not wild card. It's Colvin. You're right. Wild card. <laughs> Lots of nat twos. If he survives this part, he can take the job at the airlock just for the opportunity to find around. What is the airlock? Where is it? Can somebody point me to airlock? Oh, that's where the XK pods are. Yes. <laughs> is that is that everyone but the wild card? You. That's everybody but me. One other person. Dallas, I think Dallas fell asleep. No, I'm here. You fell asleep. He's about to. Hey, look. Oh shit. <laughs> Luca, that's you've rolled twice now. I'm here we go. I'm watching Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, man. Okay, I, I completely approve of that. You need to roll 1d2. Also, don't panic. James, you need a roll uh, as well. So what, what's going on? I have. I got a 2. Oh, okay. okay. Really? Not you, AJ. Because he's a special kind of AJ. Because oh, <laughs> he's the wild yes. card. Yes. Luke is the only one that's net Literally one so far. Oh. So Neil's also net one. Uh, also, I guess the only thing I need to figure out, Sean, is how are y'all doing that? Like, how was he doing the roll of things with his macros, or what? Yeah, he set up a bunch of macros. It, if you go over to your little, um, what looks like a gears cog, cog yeah, uh. you click that, there'll be macros for you. Oh, ATH attack. Here's my dex. Vicious. Yep. Uh, what do I do? Also, uh, hit show macro click bar. Add those to your bar. We're so, back. now everybody's rolled out. Luca's managed to roll three times and got two nat ones. <laughs> In a row. Uh, we'll, be moving so. to, we'll be moving to Coven. Then after Coven, uh, you guys will be meeting each other depending uh, for what you roll. One's will be meeting each other, two's will be meeting each other. Then you guys are all going to be going to the court, uh, to the courting room for the big message, and you start your job. So is this like the two robots uh, meeting each other with all the he non-robots? Right. So, all right, so I robot. click uh, show macro click bar and I check all those boxes, right? Yeah. And then it'll automatically roll it out? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> First time rolled <bro>, twenty. <laughs> no, I've done it before. Uh, this is my this is my third time, but uh, this is the oh. first time using this setup. It, oh. it's, it was different in my Okay. All right. Um. Um. Okay. Yeah. Doing COVID. All right. What is your name, do, sir? Your first and last. Yes, yeah, so I actually have uh, a last name. Okay, so his name is Colvin Clark, and he is a Slorian. Okay, and um, what brought you to the Milanji? Uh, yes, it's actually interesting. Um, well, he was. On a 
on a um, Stace Arc. Okay. Name uh, Delta Seven. And you you already know what a Stace Arc is. Mm -hmm. But when you don't know, which you're a big ass colony arc for people who want to live in a damn ship out of space. And um let me go to my emails. Yeah. Okay. So, um, born on the space, except, um, uh, Coven never got to see with his own eyes the planet that his parents were from and born on. He, he was told stories of it only growing up that it was a uh, multi, multi race, so various different races on it, not just, um, Zalorian. And it was named, uh, Telthar. And it was more beautiful than words can ever uh, begin to describe, or at least that's what he was told by his parents on and off consistently. Uh, he found out from his parents that Telthar was destroyed by a madman man named Vex, who happened to be a good friend of his father's before, you know, he went crazy. Uh, his father worked alongside, uh, he worked alongside his father to help build, says Stays Art. Both of them were um, very, uh, very well-known engineers. So they were good at what they did when it came to building such things. Um, you know, of course, this was all before Dex started having visions and went completely crazy, saying that the universe was doomed and that... We are all doomed to die, and uh, he built a bomb strong enough to blow up uh, Telthar, and took himself with the planet uh, after giving his mad crazy speech about the end of the universe and um, life as we know it ending. And uh, since my since Coven's father worked alongside him building. Arc, uh, he uh, caught on to his plans of the bond that he was making, engineering, and was able to forewarn the High Council of what was going on, and they were in turn able to uh, notify and warn the civilians on the planet. Uh, a lot of casualties were met. Millions of millions died, and only. Uh, only a thousand people escaped uh, uh, in the arc into deep space and cleared the explosion in time before uh, before the arc two almost was going to share the same fate. And growing up, uh, his upbringing was actually, you know, pretty normal. Um, the only thing that was unfortunate was his you know his planet that he never got a chance to be born on or know about because it was destroyed uh, after he had already been born and was conceived on the ark um, but having that story with him growing up hearing that and you know being foreshadowed by such a great hero that is his dad for sending so many people and for being able to um, aid in the way that he did, it changed for him for the better and made him into the man he is today and made him want to be a lot like his dad and pursue in the search of knowledge. Um, even though people still deem Vex as a crazy lunatic and a heretic, their Coven is uneasy about this. There's a lot of unknown unknowns and uh, he's not sure if this actually was the ramblings of a madman or if there might be truth to what you know to what Vex said uh, I mean and if he's if it's right and there is some unknown threat out there that's going to destroy everything um, he wants to be the first to know about it and or find out whatever he can so that he can then like his father try to forewarn as much people as he can and try to prevent it from happening and so that is why he is now um, on this ship, 
heading to the next planet, wherever it may take him, to try to find any information or knowledge he can about what Vex was saying about the impending doom and the end of 